Here in my part of the world, the last few weeks have been incredibly hot. And it's made me realize that while I have a ton of dresses that either I've made, like this one that I love to wear, or vintage dresses that are super cute, I very much lack warm weather appropriate tops in my closet. Honestly, don't have any tops other than like workout gear or a heavy knit winter and fall sweaters. It is now my quest to make some tops. But I'm gonna be focusing a little bit more on the sewn tops because for me at least, sewing is much faster than knitting. I do prefer to knit and I love knit clothing items. That'll be the next video. I promise you, you'll see some warm weather vintage knits but I need a little bit more time to work on that. I would love to have original vintage pieces to wear, but it's a little bit harder for me when it comes to tops. I have a very long torso and with dresses, it's not as much of a problem because the waist can hit a little higher and it doesn't look strange and the hems are typically long enough on vintage pieces where it doesn't look too odd on me. I'm five foot nine, so I'm a little bit tall, but dresses and skirts tend to still fit okay versus tops, I've tried some on and I honestly, I typically need to add like two inches to any tops patterns that I make myself in order for it to hit me well. Looking at those vintage pieces for inspiration, I went and I found three patterns for tops for myself that I can make. So let's get right into some sewing. <laughs> finished assembling the entire sewing pattern, I cut out the pieces that I needed and laid them out on my fabric, which is this beautiful red fabric that I chose. I was super surprised that there were only three pieces here. This is such an interesting construction. I didn't know it before I bought the pattern, but I always love buying vintage patterns like this that teach me new and different ways to construct these tops. So I cut out all the pieces. I used my antique sewing machine to do most of the sewing bits, but this particular blouse required a lot of of hand sewing, at least for me, because I'm not quite as skilled with machine sewing. The hems on this, I do have a lovely antique hemming foot, but it doesn't do quite so well on curved seams, which this had a lot of. So I sat down and I did a whole bunch of hand sewing to finish off this blouse before moving on to the next one. This 1950s blouse was also a pretty simple construction, although a little bit more familiar to me, and I did most of the sewing together with my beautiful antique sewing machine, which maybe we can take a second just to really appreciate here. all of the hems on this particular blouse were nice straight lines, I was able to use the hemming foot on this machine to really help speed up the process. I absolutely love this machine, if you couldn't tell, and all of the attachments that come with it that make my life so much easier when I'm sewing. With my second blouse done, it was time to move on to working on my third puffy sleeve blouse. <laughs> So I gave up working on this shirt yesterday because when I tried it on, I realized that there was a mistake I'd have to rip back, first of all, and second of all, I didn't understand how a piece works. So let me show you what happened. So firstly, yes, I love this fabric, I love this pattern, but I thought it was a little weird that my arm side had this like little pointy bit, like maybe I attached something to the wrong side somewhere. And yes, I flipped these two. So I have to undo these seams, this seam, flip it, redo everything. So I sat and I puzzled these things. We've got this to fix because I messed that up and this to figure out. Let's fast forward to this being at least the right way around and then we can maybe figure out what's going on with these. I think I did it right this time. So you can see here now we have a nice smooth line into the arm side and I stared for a little bit longer at the pattern and I realized that it's a particular folding and pressing technique. I think I have my button bands all ready to go. So all I need to do really is to secure this band in place a little bit and add the collar, the sleeves, the sleeve cuff, buttons, and hem it. Let's do some of the finishings. I, I can't wait for the sleeves to come on it.
Now with all of my shirts done, I thought it would be really fun to kind of use the inspiration pictures or the pattern pictures to style each shirt itself. So I'm going to be starting with this lovely more 1950s ruched shirt. I guess I'll start with the makeup and then we'll see what we can do for the hair. The hair is quite short. I think there's a way I can do it. It's been a while since I've done any kind of heavier makeup look. I work from home, so it's not often that I even really put makeup on. If I do, it's just very basic. This is gonna be different for me. She's got quite a thin brow. I am not down for plucking my brow quite that thin. I can make mine maybe a little bit more defined. I can't really see any blush in the picture, but I'm just gonna put a hint on. I did an apple in my cheeks. I can't really tell what eye makeup she's wearing, but it does look like there's extra emphasis on the eyelashes, so I'll just put a hint of eyeliner on. By the way, my mirror's down here, so I'm gonna be like hunching over in the mirror over here. Usually my personal makeup is a little, I think you'd be very kind to call it dewy. In, re in reality, I just don't like to set my face with powder because I don't like how it feels, but I have a feeling like not setting your face with powder wasn't really a look. And now a very red lip. Cherries in the snow. Oh wow, this is more like a pinkish red. I think it'll be fine. And now it's time to do my hair. The person in the photo is definitely has a lot shorter hair than I do. I'm holding my hair up with a crochet hook at the moment. Let me take that down. Now my hair is quite a bit longer. However, I had a friend who showed me how to do this trick once. To kind of fake shorter hair and put it in a low looped ponytail kind of like that in the back and then you tuck it under and pin that in place you can just slightly fake that you have longer hair or sorry you have shorter hair the lady has a headband on I don't have a black headband that looks like that so I'm going to go find maybe a ribbon or like a scarf I can tie around my head is it perfect no, but I think it does give a slight illusion that I have shorter hair than I do in reality. <laughs> Let's go to the final reveal of my first top. I think that was decently successful. Now this next one is definitely more 1940s style. We've got two victory rolls and a little bow in the back. There's no color in the makeup, but I'm just gonna switch up my lip color to be just, you know, something a little bit different. And then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm probably gonna struggle for a hot second with my hair. So yeah, let's, let's do all of that. Oh, oh that's, that's not lipstick, that's just a pimple. <laughs> and now for the victory rolls. It'd help if I have a hairbrush, but I don't know where that is. So if it seems like everything is a little out of place for me right now, we are actually moving again. And I knew we were moving again at some point this year, but it was originally supposed to be much later in the year. And it turns out that as usual, plans have changed as they do. And now it's happening a lot quicker. So I have a lot of things planned that I want to share with you all, but it also just really depends on just moving. And it would be different if it were, you know, we're moving within the same town to a different place or maybe across state lines or something, but we're moving straight across the country, several thousand miles. I'm excited. It's a good thing. It's a move I've been really looking forward to, but it's a big one, you know? I'm excited, but also uh, pretty distracted. <laughs> and I've got lots of things that I wanna take with me and I wanna make sure survive the move okay. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Although I am very excited because right now I'm sharing an office space, but in the new place, which we just signed, I'm getting my own office space. Now I work from home, so it does have to be an actual office in the sense that I can do my full-time job there, but it's big enough that it can be part office, part uh, crafting space. So I'm very excited. How does that look? I don't even know that you can tell that that's a victory roll, but you know, we're, we're just going to keep going. I'm lopsided, a little uneven, but uh, I think we're going to go with it. There's probably a ponytail going on, but because I don't have my hair set, I'm going to put it in like a low bun. Let me grab a ribbon to tie into my hair in a lovely bow and my second shirt that I made. Yeah. 
I absolutely love this blouse. I will say I was so sad because as I was hand stitching this collar on, I had just finished eating a bowl of pasta. And of course, whose clumsy self puts their brand new white collar down into the bowl of pasta? Well, I do, of course, of course I do. So the next and last top that I made this week is probably the most interesting. When I bought the pattern, I didn't realize that it had such a unique construction. And once again, I'm just gonna change my lip color slightly for this last one. We're going very dark. Mm, I love this lipstick, but I feel like it really shows when you have it colored within the lines. And I really tried, but definitely not perfect. So what am I gonna do for my last look? I think I might do like a, oh, what about a French twist? That could be fun. I have my French pin here, and then Usually when I do this correctly, I just need the big French pin, but I'm working a little fast right now. I've definitely done better, but it's okay. I think the most interesting part of this next one isn't me getting ready in terms of hair makeup, but me putting on this blouse. So you can see the final shape of the piece of fabric basically that I have, and then how you put it on and put it together so that it comes together as a full blouse. So let me go show you how that works. so much for watching this video if you are interested in some summer vintage knitting please feel free to subscribe as that will be the next video coming out bye